So you guys get to see most of the new projects, but not the stuff I built forever ago. Looks like a regular cooler, except for there's a big white chunk of something underneath, and there's a power cord. That's right. It is a refrigerated cooler that I built forever ago. This thing is filthy. It's spent the last 10 years or so just living outside. Snow, rain, everything, sun. So this is what we got inside. And you may recognize this piece. This is usually in a mini fridge. This would actually be what's actually in the freezer. And that's the only thing that actually cools them. So this is the unit that would be in the freezer that chunks ice gets chunked up around. You got to chip off the ice. But this would be up there and then any cold air, and this is at the top, falls down. And I put this, I decided to build it just centralized right in the middle of the entire um, cooler. You can still stack stuff all the way around it. It's only, you know, it's only an eighth inch thick, you know, maybe three millimeters or so, two millimeters thick, the whole thing. So you can stack stuff all the way around it. Oh, well, not too much room on this side, but on all the sides, everywhere, you could pack it in here and anything actually touching it would freeze. But I wanted to be able to, I didn't want to just put it on one side because then everything just on that one side. And I wanted to get it up as high as possible so any cool air would fall as well. And also being a chest, all the cool air actually stays in here. So every time you open it, you lose virtually no, no um, cold air. I can actually feel right here, feels just almost room temperature. And as soon as I drop right down into here, it's all nice and cool. Kind of neat, kind of like those open, um, you know, old grocery stores how you used to be able to just to reach into the chests to grab, you know, ice cream and everything. They were just completely open chests and they worked on this principle. So how did I get this inside of this? So you see, yeah, I don't know if you can see over here, but there's a scar and everything's filled with foam. So here you can see I actually cut out the cooler, a whole strip, and then all the way across the bottom to actually accommodate that thing. And I actually slid the entire cooler on and then refoam. I mean, behind this plastic is just foam in there, and then just refoamed it up and re glued it up and just put everything back together. And then just left everything from the refrigerator part pretty much alone. And this actually ended up from a um, this was like a uh, glass front wine fridge, a brand new one that somebody had given me because it had dropped off the back of a truck and had just shattered to pieces and it was completely dented up. So I took it on as, hey, yeah, you want it? Yeah, I'll take it. So now I'll get you down in here. I see a spider's been making home, but I retained the original, you know, there's a thermostat so you can adjust the temperature and everything. But originally I had, um, this is actually another part. This is actually a uh, Fran Trout out of a, I believe a range hood that goes above your stove. And I had a fan right here that anytime this was running, it would blow air across the compressor and everything else and just keep everything as cool as possible. But that ended up just being noisier than I wanted and it really made no difference to the, uh, to the running of the unit. So this could actually come, I've already pulled the fan out years and years ago. That was one of the first things, but this it looks like a tack welded it in, but this could easily come out and we can see behind it. So maybe I'll cut that out real fast. Don't need that. And then it's just exactly what it looks like. We've got a compressor, a small little thermostat. And I actually left, if I did this again, I wouldn't leave so much room. I wasn't sure. Um, this metal plate down here was the only thing original to the fridge, really. And then you got the two lines running up. You got a thermostat line and then just one large a, um, line up to the evaporator. And then there's a little teeny skinny, you can see some of it over here, that runs up the side of it, actually inside. So you just pretty much got two lines that go up in. And so, and then there's some foam. So I drilled the hole all the way up through and out through the side and slid everything through the side. But this is actually pretty small where you could, and I mean all this line, because this was a throwaway fridge, I really didn't care. All the line actually bent relatively easily that I can mount this almost anywhere and maybe I wouldn't mount it below but maybe I'd mount it on the side and it would take up a lot less room and still do the exact same thing. It's very quiet. Been running this whole time and it gets really cold. Negative 2, about negative 19 C. So whatever you put on here, well, it'll freeze. You know, even setting stuff by it. I mean, it's set up to be pretty darn cold. 
But the idea is there's a company out there that makes stuff kind of like this called um, Angle or something to that effect. And they're about, a, I think they're $800 to $1,000 for something very similar to this. But of course, it's definitely more professional. So it's just kind of proof of concept, me building one for with all these just free scrap parts. But the idea is, is you would never really, this could actually still use ice. It would use ice just fine. But you would never actually use ice. You would just put all your food in here and run this during the day or something. Um, when you're running generator or solar for something else when you're camping or out and about and then You would actually just shut it off and leave it off For all day and then you just go back out and fire it up whenever you needed to and other than that You would just leave it off or this would just be something you just left on your deck at all times And you just made it a party fridge and just always had your brewskis sitting around in here just getting nice and nice and cold regular um, soda pop and stuff would probably get too cold and freeze there's just not enough transition space where i put this i would have to bend and i could there's just one line i'll get you guys down in there but there's just one line coming up and i could bend this whole thing over to just one side and have a cold side and a warm side and it would negate that and get you guys down in there so you can see there's just that one line coming up into into this piece and then on the back we, you can see a, a thermostat wire let's get you snake down in here there's a thermostat wire coming up on the other side so it's a thermostat wire but that that's pretty much it so the framework and everything i built below adds about 10 inches it could probably be shrinked down to about seven but i actually made it that height so it was actually an easier height to get into i figured while i'm adding stuff to the bottom might as well just make it to a comfortable height to reach in and out of. Um, I could probably get it way down, maybe the six inches, probably about seven inches. Um, if I did it again, I don't know if I would build it all underneath or if I would actually just build it off to a side. Cause that seems how, you know, if you go buy a commercial $800,000 unit, that seems to be how they've done it is actually just built a, uh, a unit off to the side. Cause you can get a lot smaller. They probably, they might even use a, um, a tall compressor which are skinnier usually those are used in like um ac window ac units they might use one of those i don't know but you can get a lot taller where these ones are usually used in refrigerators because they're shorter and they're just big ball units the only thing that this it seems to run good i haven't used it a ton um actually i haven't even started it up in a couple years so today was the first time i fired it up in quite a while but the only thing it doesn't like is the gfci switches but a lot of freezers and refrigerators don't and the Problem with it, I think because it jostles around. I have a video on what's inside actually a, um, I dissect a refrigerator compressor motor. And what's inside of those, you just got a little metal housing um, and inside just a little piston pump and a, and a motor. But you can hear it actually jostling around. I don't know if you can hear that clunking, but when you have it plugged into a GFCI when it's running, as soon as you, if you jostle it and it makes that, that rattle sound, as soon I think the motor is touching the case and it doesn't like that and it actually shorts out the uh, or not short it's not even short it just trips the GFCI because it's spilling a ground is being compromised but a regular plug like right now it doesn't care probably wouldn't be good to um, put this in the back of your four-wheel drive vehicle and have have it plugged in and running all the time but it doesn't seem to mo bother it but tell me what you guys think just a random project thought I'd do a little show and tell on an old project that's just been kicking around still don't know what i want to do with it just you know you build something unique and you just let it sit tell me what you guys think thumbs up see you guys soon go watch the compressor video on what's inside of a compressor if you want see you bye